Welcome and uh, good afternoon and evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we have a uh, special host with us today, uh, Randy. I got that right? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Just meeting you for the first time that um, you are wanting to uh, interview Drake today, and uh, I'm kind of excited about that, too. But uh, there are some things that have apparently um, been going around, uh, false information given by other people, and we're going to address those in a little while. But um, there's also been an issue, I guess, with people from Australia who are wanting to um, follow in the footsteps that... uh, uh, citizens here have taken and uh, you know, get the Australian sovereignty and whatnot. And for those people, I would have to ask them to send an email um, with their their country in the subject line so that the, uh, we know who to forward those on to. And uh, the email can be sent from the Freedom Reigns website. And so, anyways, Randy, I'm going to let you go ahead and begin with your interview. No, we did again. No, no, you're there, Drake. Randy, are you there? Okay, goodness gracious, it looks like we are still having technical issues. Um, I guess Randy was called in okay. as the host. Uh, I was having a lot of problems with delay. Are we in real time now? Uh, yeah, we're in real time. Hi, Drake. Hello. <laughs> so, Randy, do you want to go ahead and start with start your interview with Drake? Goodness. Sounds like we may Sounds have like another technical have glitch. Yeah, yeah, it does. And somebody also has their speakerphone on. Yeah, that's what I was experiencing too. Our, am I? I had like about almost thirty second delay on my signal. I think maybe I've got that corrected on my side now. Okay. All right. Well, I've got Drake okay. here for you, uh, ready for you to interview. I don't know who's got the speakerphone on because I have got all mics muted except for yours, mine, Drake's, and uh, I think we have Muggsy who's called in as the host. Okay, yeah, that's right. There was a lot of difficulty in me getting tapped in, and uh, so I apologize for that. There was a, a number of problems. Um, I appreciate being on today. I appreciate you making the time for me to come on and talk to Drake. Um, I know that there's a lot of things that you have to discuss, and um, I'm very interested right now in in, in kind of getting to uh, some things that are concerns that have been filtered through me and through our network regarding um, specifically the paperwork that has been filed and an interest uh, that people have in, at this point, maybe being able to see that. Can you maybe respond to that right now? Um, Yes, uh, I can respond to that in a couple of different ways. Okay. Uh, First of all, it's good to meet you. Say what? I said it's good to meet you. Good to speak with you. Oh, good to meet you too. (laughs) Um, uh, Okay. um, Let's see here. How can I preface this correctly? we have supposedly made blank copies of the paperwork without signatures available uh through one of our con one of our uh uh people that uh was handling the paperwork and um I don't know Deatra, do you feel comfortable with uh yeah, requests what? for that coming through you or how do you want to do that yeah. um actually no what we are what's happened is we have had Uh, One state has graciously offered to uh, redact names, so 
so as to protect those individuals. Um, and we will be placing those documents um, in image form on our website, and hopefully they will be available by tonight. Our webmaster is currently out, but when I spoke with him this morning, he was that was the top of his priority list for the website. It will have its own little button and everything else, so it will be very easy for people to find. Okay, Does great. that answer that, that goes, question? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, it goes a long way right now towards I, – I know that you've done a lot of interviews, and I understand that we're dealing with a media where everybody gets to have their say, and sometimes that's a bit of a problem from the standpoint of somebody who's bringing out a message. People have opinions, and people uh, tend to be rather cynical about the work that you're doing, and that is kind of filtered out in ways that I think um, – have maybe made it more difficult to get the message out. And I understand your position in terms of protecting the people that signed the documents. And at the same time, and I expressed this through our mutual contacts, that um, I felt anything you could do to make those, those publicly available and visible gives a great deal of credibility to what you're trying to do right now, Drake. I uh, appreciate that, too. I've had a lot of requests um, in varying different ways, both on shows and uh, via forwarded emails uh, requesting something. And so far, um, that wasn't available. Now that it's going to be, um, my next step is that I've requested official documentation of some sort um, from uh, the people I deal with. So. Okay. We'll find that out uh, hopefully in a day or so. My line of questioning about the documents, and this really was the top of the things that I wanted to talk about, is that maybe it would be good to un for the people to understand the process itself and what that entailed and why, for instance, when you file documents into a court, these documents are documents of record. Therefore, there is an assumption, and I'll put it that way, that these documents would be publicly available or available in a way that would be verifiable? In other words, a paper trail? Uh, no. Um, that's another uh, aspect of this. If you don't have the code numbers, you don't have access just that simple. Now, what you have to understand or what people don't understand is that this was simply uh, a notification process. However, Within the paperwork itself, there is a um, complete divorcement from the uh, corp present corporate uh, government and governmental structure, any of their affiliates and any of their assigns, uh, superiors, etc. In other words, we have divorced ourselves totally from um, what is going on. Now, in that process, one of the things that was done was that the um, uh, paperwork itself uh, de declares our freedom, just like the uh, Declaration of Independence. Uh, through that, uh, if people would bother to read it, it states that uh, a government that becomes repressive and um, that the people can't live with any longer is allowed to be, uh, as a duty by the citizens, replaced. That's basically what this is about. And okay. the simplicity of it, I know, is uh, difficult for some people to get around, get their head around. However, um, the basic civilian authority for the um, military to back us up has been given through that declaration that notification process and the documents used. The documents are the 1787 Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, the Bill of Rights, and that beautiful thing called the Declaration of Independence. Those are our base documents. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now, understanding that and understanding that what you just described is a simple process that gets back to roots and origins, at the same time, what we have experienced uh, in the over 250 years since has been a long succession of court rulings, adhesion documents, and uh, basically a process 
that transferred citizenship from that original constitutional construct, I guess maybe even going into the the period of the 13th Amendment, how does this impact contracts that have made between states in terms of, let's say, federal funding, which are, in fact, adhesion con- contracts that give the federal corporate government entree into the affairs and business of the several states? Well, basically, the thing is that we have reverted back to those founding documents as they are and as they are only. So we have what is called a regressive um, legal position back to those documents and nothing after holding any validity. So um, basically we're starting over similarly to what was uh, first um, put together in terms of the structure and circumventing any and all of any of the agreements, uh, executive orders, uh, laws, rules, regulations, you name it. So the this notification steps outside of any challenge or uh, anything of that nature that deals with present day uh, law, because common law is mentioned, uh, among other things. The, uh, it is an extraordinary difference, and it's hard for people to understand at times that a notification can have such uh, impact. However, the manner in which this was uh, put together is such that it does so. So. Um, What you're looking at is stepping outside of or independence of the corporate governance. Secondly, the other part of this is that the um, corporate governance being ruled by the banking system, uh, and that banking system, already having been leaned, um, is in a position where it has to repay everything that is borrowed, stolen, leveraged, etc. over the years. So... The uh, premise of this is two, twofold at this point. First, you have the declaration, and that is a separate project from everything else. I want that to be perfectly clear. Now, a lot of people like to give it a name. A lot of people like to uh, run it into other things. That's not possible. There are basically four of these uh, actions, uh, separate entities each. Now, the second part of it is a localization effort. What people don't understand is that this so-called house cleaning is not going to come much below, if if at all below, the governor governor level in a state. So everybody that uh, is in a state needs to start looking at their governmental structure, figure out who the crooks are, so that they can be removed from a local standpoint. Now, the the, uh, secondary part of all this is that most of all of the power that you'll find wielded by everybody, this is nationally here, nationally in other countries, and internationally, is financial. That financial system is being set to be taken down to zero. The secondary part of that same zeroing out is what's called RV, or re-evaluation. You're going to go from a debt instrument orientation to an equity instrument orientation in terms of currency. This is a big world of difference. This is going to adjust and affect a lot of things. It will not uh, adversely affect anything other than people will be able to, for the first time in 200 years or so, um, feel a financial as well as um, real freedom. In terms of the legalistics, uh, I've already mentioned common law, the basis of which is simple. If you have an injured party, if you if you do not have an injured party or damaged property, there is no crime. That does not mean that if you if you act stupid, somebody won't slap you in the, in the slammer in the cooler until you uh, sober up or whatever the problem might be. That is also still available. <clears throat> 